Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. Today we take a look at the rosy maple moth. The name is pretty accurate, as this is indeed a species of moth. It does also look rather rosy with its amazing colour scheme, but pink and yellow aren't exactly the colours you would associate with maple. You'd probably be expecting some deep reds and browns. But the name still makes sense, because the maple part of the name is not anything to do with its colour, but it is to do with where they come from, as the host trees are maples. The real scientific name of this amazing moth is Dryocampa rubicunda. Dryocampa is a small genus of only six different species of moth in the family Saturnidae. This family of moths is generally full of the very large moths, however rosy maple moths are incredibly small, only about 4-5 to five centimeters in wingspan, making them the smallest of all silk moths. The reason they still fit into this family is due to their very fluffy bodies and reduced mouth parts common amongst the Saturnidae family, as well as the fact that during their adult stage they do not eat at all, like many other Saturnidae species. Sadly for us Europeans, the rosy maple moths live only in North America, and so I will not be able to find these amazing looking moths in my garden. They are found only in the east of America, but their most westernly extent reaches Minnesota and parts of Texas. They obviously require maple trees to live in, and so the eastern seaboard around New England and southeastern Canada is an amazing place to see them. They like silver maples, red maples, sugar maples, and box elder maples. They can also be found on neighbouring trees of different species like oak trees, and will spend basically their entire lives on or around these trees. They have been known to live in urban areas as well if there are maple trees around. So the reason they like maple trees so much is because that's what they eat, maple leaves. However, as previously mentioned, the adults do not eat. They only feed when they're still in the larval and pupal stages, and will then live off fat stores as the adults until they die. When hatched, they will eat away at the undersides of maple leaves and can cause serious damage to them, especially if there's a high volume of caterpillars in one area. This can cause problems on maple syrup plantations in the northeast of America, where these caterpillars can be quite a nuisance. However, they don't usually cause any permanent damage to the trees, but over the life of the caterpillar, they are able to consume about two to three full leaves each. Obviously these are moths and so go through various stages in life called instars. These moths have five instars and will typically live for two to nine months and so they have to be fast when it comes to mating and breeding. Males have bipectinate antenna, meaning that they are sort of a brush shape, unlike females that have your bog standard straight antenna. The reason for this difference is to do with matings. The male's antenna are more complex and bigger to allow them to detect and locate females via the pheromones the females release. Mating occurs during the night, usually in the warmer months, and females can mate with males multiple times over the breeding season, as they will keep producing broods over the whole period. Fertilization is internally done and eggs will be laid 24 hours afterwards, so it's a quick turn around. The eggs will hatch after 10 days and are typically laid in groups of 30 to 40 on the underside of the maple leaves. The caterpillars that hatch are actually called green striped maple worms and will immediately begin to eat away at the leaves. From the first instar to the last, the caterpillars go from having large black heads and pale small yellow green bodies to having yellow heads and then finally red heads with a more green body. In the first four instars of the caterpillar's life, they are largely group feeders sticking together with the 30 or 40 other individuals they were laid with. Over in the the last parts of their caterpillar life, they will become far more solitary and competitive and move away from each other. They will spend a month as caterpillars and then go into the pupal stage. They descend from their host trees and go underground to make this transformation. They will usually spend only two weeks in this stage before becoming adults, however if they were laid near the end of the warm season, they can stay in this stage all winter until it's warm enough to become adults, in which case they will have extended their usual two month lifespan to the longer eight to nine months. However, most of the lives they will have been pupae. Their amazing coloration serves one purpose in two distinct ways, defense. These moths are obviously small and easy prey for birds, so they have to have some sort of way to seem dangerous. That's why their bright colors are a form of aposmatism. Aposmatism is where animals make themselves very bright and colorful in order to warn predators that they might be toxic to eat. These moths aren't actually toxic, it's just a bluff. The other way their coloration is a form of defense is as a camouflage, which may sound strange considering how bright and pink they are, however maple seed cases can also be a violent pink shade, and due to their winged shape, they look rather similar to the moths. 
As previously mentioned, birds will eat them, but what birds, you may ask? Well, they live in America, so they will most commonly be eaten by American songbirds, such as blue jays and the tufted titmice, as these are all small nimble birds that can easily fly up to these moss and catch them. As caterpillars, they are vulnerable to birds as well, so that's why they generally live on the underside of maple leaves. We don't actually know their population trend, but we hope they are doing well, and they at least seem to be doing so. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, if you'd like to see more from us.